In 2007, these African countries embarked on a momentous challenge to build a wall across the entire width of Africa. But unlike the Great Wall of China or Trump's wall, this wall is made from trees and grass, and instead of keeping people out, it holds back the entire Sahara Desert. Just south of the Sahara is a region called the Sahel, a semi-arid land home to 135 million people. The problem is, climate change is causing the Sahara to expand into the Sahel, at a breakneck pace of up to 48 kilometers or 525 American football pitches every year. This creates persistent droughts which at best destroy farms and livelihoods and at worst cause famines, killing hundreds of thousands of people. To make matters worse, the Sahel's population is exploding and could reach 330 million people by 2050. The combination of an increasing population and a reducing availability of land and water are creating conflicts which force young people to migrate to neighbouring countries. To avoid a humanitarian disaster, the African Union launched the Great Green Wall project. The aim is to plant a green corridor spanning 8,000 kilometres in length and 15 kilometres in width from Senegal to Djibouti by 2030. For context, that's more than twice as long as the US-Mexico border and more than 10 times the length that Trump was able to add to the border wall. This corridor would become a new world wonder, restoring 100 million hectares of degraded land, sequestering 250 million tonnes of CO2 and creating 10 million jobs in the process. This could increase climate resilience, helping to prevent catastrophic future famines and ultimately benefiting the entire planet by reducing global average temperatures. The project has already received support from the UNCCD, FAO, AMCEN, UK Botanical Gardens and the World Bank. So how's it going? Project leaders weren't going into this blind. They learned many lessons from similar desert pushback projects like the Algerian Green Dam and the Green Wall of China. Armed with this knowledge, there was a sense of hope in the air. However, the project has struggled to make headway. By 2020, a measly $1 billion had been raised out of the 30 billion needed. Officially, only 4% of the Green Wall has been completed, or around 4 million hectares of trees. But if you consider the wider restoration efforts of independent farmers planting crops and other vegetation, then the progress becomes closer to 15%, with the majority in Ethiopia, Niger and Eritrea. Either way, the project will have to proceed 20 times faster, restoring an additional 8 million hectares per year to finish by 2030. Thankfully, in the last two years, the Great Green Wall received an additional $20 billion from international organisations in a final push to finish the project by 2030. In our first ever video, we discussed the pitfalls of restoration by relying on monocultures to cut down costs, and the Great Green Wall is certainly in danger of making these mistakes if insufficient funding is obtained. However, the evidence shows that by engaging with local communities, scientists have identified desirable trees and grass species which are well adapted to the local environment. This further increases the Great Green Wall's chances of success as the tree roots lock in soil and water, allowing crops and livestock to be farmed in the region and drinking wells to remain plentiful. In fact, in those regions which have already begun work, migration is down and both school attendance and employment are up. As mentioned, the increasing population and reduction of water and farmable land are creating conflicts which force young people to leave the Sahel, whilst those unable to migrate face the risk of famine. It would be inhumane for the world to allow such a disaster to occur, which is exactly why the Great Green Wall has received support from around the world. But humanitarian sentiment isn't the only factor in motivating foreign interests in the Great Green Wall. Our globalised economy is hypersensitive to the happenings across the planet. Remember the Evergreen. A giant container ship wedged from bank to bank, blocking one of the world's most important shipping lanes. As tankers queued, oil prices rose, the blockage another blow to global trade. So aside from the rapid degradation of millions of human lives, the large-scale famine, conflict and migration in the Sahel could cause global instability across the world. Additionally, the Sahel could pack a serious punch in our global fight against climate change. The region has more potential solar capacity than anywhere else in the world, and could be a major energy producer in Africa. This would accelerate the region's shift away from fossil fuels 
which African nations are becoming increasingly dependent on as they industrialise. Large-scale provision of cheap, clean energy could massively increase Africa's manufacturing output and economy. Moreover, as discussed in another previous video, desertification is not a problem localised to Africa, but affects two-thirds of the world's surface and around one in four people. So if successful, the lessons learned here could act as a blueprint for saving biodiversity and farmland across the globe. Therefore, it's imperative that we spread the news and support projects like this. You can add your support directly through TreeAid, a charity contributing to the Great Green Wall and building climate resilience in many countries across the Sahel. We will be making an additional donation to TreeAid this month from our Patreon income, so if you'd like to support our Eden and TreeAid, please consider joining our Patreon community. When completed, the Great Green Wall will be one of the largest living structures on the planet, three times the size of the Great Barrier Reef, and that is something we can all be proud of. So how would you tackle a project like this? Let us know in the comments, and as always, look after yourselves, each other, and most importantly, the planet around you. Thanks again, R. Eden.